In this video, we're going over how to achieve the perfect green screen every time. Make sure to join our Patreon to get a ton of perks, including a private VFX masterminds chat where you can talk to other VFX artists. Link in the description below. Now, in order to set up the most proper green screening environment possible, you're gonna need two stages of lighting. One lighting setup for the talent and another separate lighting setup for the green screen itself. The idea here is to have total control over both stages of lighting so that when it comes time to chroma key and post, we can achieve the best possible results. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is always dial in the lighting of the talent first. Make sure there's enough space between your talent and the green screen to avoid as much green color spill onto your talent as possible. Then fire up your key light and adjust the light and camera settings until you have proper exposure on your talent. If you have access to something like an Atomos external monitor that has false color, adjust your exposure until the skin tone reaches about 60 to 70 IRE. Now in terms of the green screen itself, it's really important to make sure that the screen is as smooth as possible to eliminate any shadows that will cause color hue issues in post. Place your lights the same distance away from the screen as the screen is wide to get the most even light coverage as possible and avoid any hot spots. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your green screen lights match the same color temperature as your key light. In this case, we're using the Aperture 300D Mark II light, which is set to 5600 Kelvin, so our green screen lights are also set to 5600 Kelvin. Then we'll dial up the power of the lights until we get a good exposure level, or even more ideally, an IRE value close to or a little under skin tone on the false color readout. Another reason false color comes in super handy in a situation like this is because it allows you to visually analyze how the light is spreading across the green screen. Now, a very slight difference is not going to affect things too drastically here, but you also don't want to go too far out of the spectrum either. If you're noticing hot spots on your screen, pull your lights further back to get a more even light spread and then adjust the power up to compensate for the exposure. The next critical thing that we want to ensure is that our camera is recording at the highest quality codec and bit depth as possible. Filming in something like ProRes 422 is going to yield us much better results in post than filming in a heavily compressed codec like H.264. If your camera doesn't have internal ProRes recording capability but it does have a clean HDMI output, you can use something like the Atomos Ninja V to record clean ProRes externally. Resolution also plays a part here as well as a higher resolution gives us more pixels to work with when we're keying in post, but by far the more important factor here is the compression codec and bit depth. Normally we're used to hearing about the 180 degree shutter rule, which produces the most accurate results according to how our eyes see real life, which is true, but one of the biggest enemies of chroma keying is motion blur. To combat this, we want to set our shutter speed to at least a 90 degree shutter angle to cut down on any blur if our talent is moving. And then we can always add motion blur back into the composite in post. And once we're in After Effects with our clip selected, draw a mask around the talent to mask out any unnecessary parts of the frame. Next, add the key light plug into the clip and select the eyedropper tool and pick a spot on the green screen that's close to the talent. And right away, it's already done a really good job of removing the green, but we can refine it down even further. In the View drop-down menu, select Screen Matte to view the alpha channel. We can see that it's almost perfect, but there are a few small spots in the white that are getting keyed out slightly, and there's some faint parts of the background that aren't fully keyed out as well. So next, under Screen Matte, adjust the clip black until the background is pure black and the clip white until the talent is pure white without any holes in the mat. Then once again in the view drop down menu, select intermediate result. Next, we'll add the key cleaner plugin to clean up the edges. The additional edge radius parameter adjusts how much of the edge is being cleaned. A higher amount will result in a softer edge and a smaller amount will result in a sharper edge, but may retain some visible unwanted edge coloring. For this, we'll go with about five for now. Reduced chatter will get rid of any digital jittering and alpha contrast will help tighten up the edge. Be careful with this though when it comes to hair because it can ruin certain fine details. Then lastly, add the advanced spill suppressor plugin to get rid of any unwanted green spill from the green screen. 